Let's look at how you go about doing this. So this is asking you to do some solubility calculations. So whenever it asks you how many grams of something are soluble, or how much of something is soluble in something else, you will need some sort of solubility information. Now this graph gives a relationship between solubility, which is the amount of stuff that can dissolve, and temperature of a substance. Now of course, comparing how much will dissolve in 100 grams of water versus how much will dissolve in 1,000 grams of water is not a fair comparison. So for each of these, we standardize it to per 100 grams of water, how much will dissolve. And again, you can see that that solubility is affected by temperature. Some things such as gases become less soluble as temperature rises. See, temperature rises, you go this way, so it's becoming less soluble. Other things such as solids become more soluble as temperature rises. So anyway, how do we use this to answer this? The short answer is, in 100 grams of water, that's this amount right here, amount per 100 grams. So you can just say NaNO3 and find it, which is right here. Find 30 degrees Celsius, which is right here. Find where it intersects with the NaO3 line, and then draw it over here, and that's about 94 grams or so. So that's the answer, 94 grams are soluble. However, that doesn't count as showing work. So it's not just enough to say 94 grams is soluble. How do you actually show the work? And the answer is this. You're given is your grams of water, so you write that down. One. 100.0 grams of water. Multiply it by a conversion factor. What is the conversion factor? It's the relationship between this and water. So you'll notice this is grams of solute per 100 gra grams of water. So remember, solute is the thing that's getting dissolved. So if we're looking at NaNO3 getting dissolved in water, then sodium nitrate is the solute. So it says at 30 degrees Celsius, it, and at 30 degrees intersects with this line here. We trace it over. It's just under 95. I'm going to call it 94. So 94 degrees, or sorry, 94 grams of sodium nitrate is expected to dissolve per 100 grams of water. So here's how we write that. 94 grams of sodium nitrate per 100 grams of water. Make sure to include chemical identities in what you write. The reason why is because you want to make sure that the right things are canceling with the right things. Grams of water does not cancel with grams of sodium nitrate, for example. So therefore, these do not cancel, even though it's grams and grams, because they're different chemical identities, they do not, they do not cancel out. What you then do is you say, okay, what is that equal to? Well, grams of water cancel with grams of water to give grams of sodium nitrate as our answer. Now, uh, let's go ahead and do that. 100 times 94 divided by 100. It's just 94. If you don't believe me here, I can show you and prove it. 100 times 94 equals, divided by 100 equals 94. All right, so 94 grams of sodium nitrate. And then you box the answer. So although you could have just gotten this answer straight off the graph, this is the way in which it is required to show your work in order to get credit for calculations such as this. So let's look now at why did I call it 94 grams? Why did I round it like that? Doesn't this have just one significant figure? And the answer is we're going to treat it as infinite significant figures. So the only considerations really in our sig figs are what's in the given, that's four sig figs, and then what we read off the graph. 94 is two significant figures, so we're going to call it two significant figures. That's how we go about dealing with the rounding issue. This is going to go through the same process. Now let's look at what happens if it's not an easy 100 grams of water, because this one's just like this. I'm skipping ahead to number three. We're going to follow the same path. This is our given, 74.9 grams of water. So I write that down, 74.9 grams of water, including units and chemical identity. Multiplication sign, conversion factor. And where do we look for the conversion factor? Right here on the graph, of course. So it's asking about potassium chloride. It's asking how much is soluble in that much water at 80 degrees Celsius. So don't worry about this in regards to the graph. You look at this and you find potassium chloride. Watch. Here's 80 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to follow 80 degrees Celsius until I find the potassium chloride line, which is right here. This line is potassium chloride. 
So 80 degrees Celsius crosses the potassium chloride right here, and if I follow it over, it's just barely above 50. So I'm going to say 51 grams of potassium chloride. This is my estimate. Now I'm aware that this is close enough to 50. It's clearly right above 50, so you shouldn't be putting 50, but it's not high enough to be 55 or 60. So as long as it's a reasonably close estimate to 51-ish, then it would be accepted, which means... Mm, I might very unhappily accept an estimate of 50 or maybe 52, and it would be considered equally valid. There is going to be some variation here. But anyway, 51 grams, but remember this is per 100 grams of water. So this graph is telling me you can dissolve 51 grams per 100 grams of water. So I have to put per 100 grams of water. Therefore, the way I go about doing this is this times this divided by this. All right, let's actually do that. So 74.9 times 51 equals, divided by 100 equals that many grams. Now, grams of what? Keep in mind, grams of H2O cancels grams of H2O. What's your units? Grams of potassium chloride. So more specifically, 38.199. Yeah, but don't forget, sig figs, infinite, three and two. So we're going, to, we're going to call it 38 grams of potassium chloride is soluble in 100, in a, this many grams of water at that temperature. Obviously, if you change the temperature or change the amount of water, then this number would change also. All right, so that's how you go about doing that one. This process would follow the same process as this one up here. Now, that said... Let's look at another one. This is saying, asking you, will it all dissolve? So this is a slightly different setup. Because now instead of saying how many grams, you're saying you have this many grams, and you're putting into this much water at this temperature, will it all dissolve? So my strategy is to calculate how much, since we're dumping all this into the water, we're going to calculate how much this water can dissolve. If it can dissolve more than this, then we're going to say all will dissolve. If this is not capable of dissolving this many grams, then we're going to subtract the amount that doesn't dissolve or the amount that can dissolve out of this to find out how much is left over. So let's do that. Well, 200 grams of H2O, 200.0 grams of H2O. Now I'm going to multiply that by. Okay, ammonium chloride. Let's find that. Where's ammonium chloride? Ammonium chloride is... Where, 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 where? Right here. All right, and we want to find it at 70 degrees Celsius. So i got to find 70 degrees Celsius, trace it up, intersects right here. That's almost right on the 60 degree line, or the 60 line. So I'm going to say 60 grams of ammonium chloride because it's 60 right here, and it's grams of solute, and the solute is ammonium chloride. And then per 100 grams of water, don't forget the 60 grams of this per every 100 grams of water, 200.0. Sorry, I just realized that was out of view. Let me repeat that. So 60 right here, because when I estimated it off the graph, it's not 59, it's not 61. I'm pretty sure it's right on 60. 100 with infinite sig figs, 200 with four sig figs. So... We do the math on that, and what it's going to do is say, this is going to find out how much 200 grams of water can dissolve at this temperature. So let's do that. 200 times 60 equals, divided by 100, equals 120. Okay, so that's how much can dissolve. So look, we put in more than what can dissolve. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to subtract it out. We're going to say you put in 165 grams of NH4Cl. Oops, sorry, 165.0 grams of NH4Cl. And we're going to subtract 120 grams of NH4Cl. So this is what was added can dissolve, and when we subtract that, that's going to leave 45 
grams that can that's left over. Oops, NH4Cl left over. Okay, that is messy. Let's get that. Okay, so that's two sig figs. That's two sig figs. So we need a round right here. And that is going to give us an answer of approximately, once we round correctly, roughly 50 grams of NH4Cl left over. And that's how I go about dealing with that kind of a question. Here, in this last question, you're going to follow the same procedure. All right, there you go. Have at it.